Hi, I'm Tane. And I'm Aid, and this is Alter Call, a Married at First Sight podcast. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode, MAPS Season 17, Episode 6. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy belated Thanksgiving, Aid. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Happy Thanksgiving. I'm good. I'm good. It was, uh, I'm not a, I don't think I'm a Thanksgiving gal. I don't even know if I'm a holiday gal, to be honest. I just, you know how people get all, and by people I mean you, like how you love Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I feel nothing. Not 4th of July, not anything. It's just, yeah, okay. I just enjoy the time off. I love the Christmas season. Christmas Day, I'm pretty ambivalent. Um, <laughs> or the holiday season. I like lights. I like shiny things. I like looking at lights and shiny things. Wherever they are, yes, I like the holiday season. I also do like Thanksgiving. Um, I read somewhere that Thanksgiving is like such an American holiday. Like Christmas is religious. And while everybody pretty much does participate, Thanksgiving is like for all of us. I do understand the roots and history of Thanksgiving. But I also just think you can reclaim a thing. Like, what do we do at Thanksgiving? We get together with our families and we eat. And hopefully it's good. But there's no, besides the pressure to cook good food, besides the pressure to cook good food, there's no pressure, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. The food sucks, though. I don't like Thanksgiving food. So I just eat what I want. But the traditional Thanksgiving food, I don't like turkey. I don't like pies. I don't like (laughs) all these, like, videos of how to make turkey an edible thing. Because clearly it doesn't come that way naturally. If you have to, like, put a hex on it and put this on it and inject it with this and flip it over and do this and do this. The amount of stuff you have to do to a turkey for people to be like, this is how you make good turkey. I'm like, maybe we just shouldn't eat it. How's about that? (laughs) One of the better turkeys that I had is the Popeye's turkeys. For all you snobs that are turning your nose up, I'm telling you, don't knock it till you try it. And it's pretty easy to make. They already do all of it for you. You just need to defrost it and then shove it in. And it's seasoned pretty nice. And it's Cajun. And it it was pretty good. But uh, yeah. We get a turducken, which I also find superior to just a regular turkey. But at the end of the day, yeah, I'm just here to eat like my jollof rice and my gizdoro. That's why I'm at Thanksgiving. (laughs) Yeah, staple, staple, staple. But yeah, Um, do you have any updates you want to share with the people? As per usual, we will have After Party on Patreon. Um on Monday and smooth sailing for a nice normal episode next week on schedule. Yay. Um, I have no maths updates for the people, but I figured we could talk a little cause we get a lot of feedback whenever we talk about what we're watching. Um, I'm trying to get back into scripted shows and failing. Um, I did pick back up the morning show, but yesterday after eating and we couldn't move, we binge Squid Games, The Challenge, and I can't believe how good that show is. It's amazing, really, is all I can say. I couldn't right. finish the original Squid Games. I had to have someone give me a summary. So when I saw Squid <laughs> Games, The Challenge, I was like, no, no. But I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for those of us, uh, those of you who are in the cult of The Challenge, I, I did not miss that they called it Squid Game the challenge. They could have called it the Squid Game Challenge, but they called it the challenge because they're trying to encroach on our challenge, but that's okay. You know, imitation is a form of flattery. But um, yeah, there's just a lot of, like, I uh, Love Island Games also just finished, and that was also so surprisingly good. I can't believe it. And uh, no spoilers for anybody, but I wanted to say, you know, Black or Magic, that's all I'm saying. But it was pretty good. But I'm trying to keep up with the housewives. We have a lot of Bravo stuff going on at the same time and I'm struggling and Southern hospitality is coming back. And I'm just like, Oh my God, when I think I've watched one episode, I have another one that I need to catch up on. So, yeah. You know, I've been trying to find Lauren's last name 
so that I can look her up on like the federal government. Like, where does she work exactly? Um, and also, I've been watching Married to Med. And Sweet Tea works for the federal government, too. And I have her last name, and I could not find her, which was very annoying. Um, but yes, I've been watching Married to Med. I've been watching Potomac, Salt Lake. I'm actually behind on Beverly Hills due to the holiday. But I, I feel pretty caught up. But like you, I'm like, Southern Hospitality? I need Salt Lake City to wrap up. First off, it's probably the, my least favorite of what I'm watching. Um, and secondly, I'm like, we need to clear some space here. Okay, so um, how are you feeling about Beverly Hills? It's okay. Um, I find some stuff very good. Like I said, I haven't watched the most recent episode, but like, I like a fair number of Bella Really Hills people, or I'm usually on their side. But I quite enjoyed Kyle clarifying for Sutton that she freaks out a lot about weird stuff. And for us, the viewer, most of the time, it's pretty entertaining to watch someone spiral like this. <laughs> But I told, I just, I thought Kyle being like, here are all the times where you freaked out like a weirdo, just in Name case you <laughs> Name them. You're Name them. Name them. Name them. I mean, if you don't get, if you don't watch Beverly Hills, that's not going to make sense to you. I am not interrupting aid. It's just literally what happened in the scene. She asked her to, to answer a question and she refused to let her speak. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I am enjoying Beverly Hills. I didn't know what to expect with Rena Gone, but I stumbled across a corner on the internet that absolutely hate this season. Absolutely, but they're Rena stands and they're saying that they're not naturally friends and it's awkward. That's why they need a card game every episode to create conversation. And I'm just like, am I watching a different thing? I'm enjoying the lightheartedness. I'm enjoying them laughing together. I mean, actually, I am not a Kyle fan. Beverly Hills is probably the cast where I don't like a lot of people on there. But I'm not a Kyle fan. But I am enjoying this new her, her boundaries, her no alcohol. We've talked about this before. People who don't drink get really self-conscious when someone doesn't drink anymore. And it's such a weird thing to me. But I'm liking her standing up for herself, standing up to Sutton. I haven't watched the most recent episode, but I do agree, like in the clips that we've seen, that Sutton is right, that Kyle is not her friend. <laughs> like, Kyle just mm -hmm. never has her back. But Kyle is also right that Sutton is always freaking out about something. And I, I told you this before, that secretly I'm glad that the Sutton I know is coming back this season so we never forget who she was. Like, she just got favor because she stood up to Erica and we needed someone to stand up to Erica. But right now the Air the Sutton we met her first season is coming back because I don't know what is going on with her. She claims on watch what happens life that we'll find out something she was going through personally, but this is a woman who was distraught that her designer didn't get a visa. So I don't know what it could be, but we'll see, but I'm enjoying it. So I don't know. I don't know what they're talking about. I uh, agreed. And I don't miss Rena. I just, uh, why do these yeah. clothes want a doubt cloud, cloud of a person on them? Like, no. what is wrong yeah. with having generally non controversial yeah. <laughs> arguments? Yeah. Just light, no high stakes, anything. How are you feeling about a possible Nini return on Atlanta? First off, I just don't think it's going to happen. Okay. <laughs> could be wrong but i just don't think it's gonna happen um if she came back i'd probably be fine with it but like i said i don't think it's gonna happen okay if she did come back i cannot believe it i got over her i would never take away from the fact that nini is one of the groundbreaking reality stars that we've ever had but towards the end when she thought she was bigger and better she checked out and it just became nasty but if she came back, I think I'll be okay. I'm of two minds. I think that it will be so much pressure for you to bring back the show and then who you were and who the girls are and are not going to be the same. Um, the streets are saying Drew and Sonia are done. I mean, Drew wasn't at BravoCon at all. So I'm inclined to believe it. So I think it's a good thing for them to go. I think Portia would be good to come back. I just think they need to build their dynamic back. So if they come back, it would be nice. I just think... Atlanta needs an injection. Not that it's bad, but I just think it needs a new, a new fresh coat of paint. 
But also, I think production also needs to step it up. It's not just the ladies. So, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. They should be starting filming soon. But yeah. I can't stand Drew, but I'm sad that she's left the show because she was, her life was very interesting and entertaining. Yeah. I'm surprised. You know, I like Sonya, and I don't want anybody fired, but I'm not surprised that Sonya was fired if she was fired. She got to go. She (laughs) got to go. I feel like we should do an episode once of all these housewives that you like. It would just be called Unpopular Opinion. (laughs) <laughs> and then you list all these the Robins, the Sonyas, and all the people that you like. But anyway, you, you, uh, you okay, said a thing about which housewives would you want to have Thanksgiving dinner with? And it's oh, like nice. when when I say I like a housewife, I've realized it doesn't mean that much. Cause I'm like, I can't think of one housewife who I'm like, oh, I really just want to kick it with her. Maybe Bethany 10 years ago or 15 years ago before she was a nut. Um, That's another one you liked. (laughs) But uh, present day Bethany, no. And all the others, I'm like, I I can't. Is there a housewife you'd want to hang? Like, would it be fun to hang out with Candy? Yes. But no, not really. Oh, wait. So before that, are you the kind of person? I have a number of friends that don't believe in hypotheticals. You ask them something, they're like, I have one that gets really mad if you say things about hypotheticals. Are you that uh, kind of person? Or can you participate in hypotheticals? Um, I probably can't participate in hypotheticals, but I'm not offended when people ask them. Yeah, I know. I just I, don't think my mind stretches enough to go to hypotheticals. Okay, because I just feel there's so many housewives say, yes, I would love to hang out. As much as this might, I don't know if it would be an unpopular opinion, I would love to hang out with Erica Jane. I would love to hang out with Lisa Milan. I would love to hang out with... It escapes my mind. I feel like I need to pull up the picture. But yeah, off the top of my brain, those are people I would love to hang out with because I think they would be fun. Okay. Yeah, I don't necessarily want to gab with them. But I think it will be fun. Yeah. So you said you've been watching scripted television. I actually watched The Crown finally last night, which it's been getting such bad reviews that I wasn't expecting much. But those, I thought those first four episodes were pretty good. Uh, I put out a crowd surf on what should I watch? Should I start The Gilded Age? Should I finish Morning Show? Should I start The Crown? Because... I skipped last season. I started last season and I was like, what the heck is this? I'm not doing this. And then I skipped it. Um, And a bunch of people were like, just skip it. You already know what happens. It's just more sad than anything. So maybe the nostalgia of everything. So I might get to it. I decided to go with um, the morning show, but we'll see. I'll let you know when I do watch it, but I will say like, it makes me a little sad because the first two seasons of The Crown, I just thought those were that was just fantastic TV. I just thought it was the greatest thing ever. And as they got older, it just became very blah. I think, and this is fair for everybody who's watching, The Crown is the last, first off, the last season, the one before the season that I just watched, I would consider the worst season of The Crown. <laughs> um, it's just the one not I skipped. Yes, it's just not very good. But the thing with the crown is it's it's not just the show, it's also us watching. I think the reason why the first couple seasons, I would say up to I love Olivia Coleman, so I also thought season 3 and 4 were pretty good too, is that a lot of what we're watching is a history lesson. <laughs> and we don't know. We don't we haven't like 1950 whatever was not present times for most of us the closer we get to present times first off a lot of the mystique of the royal family is removed in the present like in the modern age um and that's actually what i think the show tracks is like it went from being this closed door i don't want to say magical but like mystical thing to them being tabloid stars which they still are to this present day so As we watch that like evolution, we, the viewer, it's like, we, I remember when Diana died. I have watched her children grow up. They're basically my age mates. Like, 
the mystique is is not there. And the newness of information is just not there. We all know the story. It's been covered. It's been beaten to death. Uh, although so I keep on running into people who are like, I don't know anything about the British royal family. And I'm like, oh. Um, <laughs> so I think it's not, I think the show is still really good. But I just think we, the viewer, don't enjoy it as much because it's it's not, we, we watched it. <laughs> we know the story already. Um, That's fair. I think you may have a point. I don't necessarily judge TV shows through that lens. I try to think that I'm objective when I watch stuff. To me, it's the acting, the chemistry, the script pacing, and things like that. So the last season that I watched, that was part of what made the ones great was the casting. I just thought Claire Foy was the bestest thing ever. Not that Olivia Coleman is not a good actress, but it's just the chemistry among everybody else and how everything gels together kind of made it a dud for me compared to that. So you may have a point. I haven't watched the last season when they got newer, but um, yeah. So we'll see. I might get to the other one. Are you watching the great British baking show? this season? Kind of. I'm like episodes behind and I can't remember anybody's name. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm keeping up with that, so we'll see. Okay. All right. Fun maps that you are here for. How are we feeling about this episode? It was pretty good. I just overall think the show is having a good season. There's stuff for us to, like, really think about every episode. Yeah, it is. My only critique would be when we get to After Party, where it feels like we're watching a different show from what these people are saying. Uh Uh-huh. And that just switches my, when I'm watching, I'm thinking of After Party. I'm like, what the heck is happening that I'm missing? Because, uh? We are still in Mexico, which is fine by me. I don't remember how many episodes a honeymoon could take. I know that they are changing things because of how the the season started. But they still have plenty of story from the honeymoon. So carry on. (laughs) <laughs> they made the wedding fast, so they have to make it up somehow. <laughs> so we just see, in the beginning, we just see some selfie cams. We see, um, yeah, everybody seems to be fairly happy on the selfie cams. Then we cut to Emily asking if Breda needs sunscreen. Her, she shows that her hand is swollen. This is like the second or third time that she's mentioned there's something wrong with her hand. And I'm like, has anybody gotten you any medical help? Or are you Um, just going to keep on saying your hand is swollen? Yeah, I'm with you. I don't understand why she hasn't had anyone look at it. Or at least have it wrapped or at least have it iced. It's it's a mystery to me. I'm like, there is a whole production who should be taking care of her. Why are they not getting her some medical help? (laughs) (laughs) And that's the other thing. I'm like, is it sprained? Is it just, well, like, there's no diagnosis. <laughs> um, and is it so, related to whatever she's wearing on after party or did she injure it again? It also appears to be the other hand or if I don't know if I'm looking at it wrong, but her cast is on the other hand from the one that's stolen. Oh, man, so many questions. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm hoping that all will be revealed we're on episode six. There's probably 22 episodes. <laughs> someone in there, someone needs to tell us how we got to after party with her head like this. Um. So Claire and Cameron, Cameron is buying shorts and Claire never misses an opportunity to not like what he's doing. If he gives her a door, she will walk through it. And she says that the shorts are too short and he makes it like a joke. Like, I thought you would like that. And she says, well, that was an assumption. And I'm like, every time this man tries to flirt with you a little, (laughs) it's not received well. And here's another opportunity for you to both criticize him and not pick up the signals that he's dropping that he's attracted to you. Mm -hmm. I think like (laughs) people are divided on Cameron and Claire. I think I saw someone says, is it just me or is Claire always criticizing him and I'm like okay because it feels like we're hard on Claire but again it's like she says these things but it's like there's a tone there's always a tone to what she's saying like would it kill you to just let him wear the swim trucks that he wants what is 
too short. According to who? <laughs> if he wore it and he was comfortable with it, then he's fine with it. So what is the issue? I don't know. It's just really annoying. And it's just stressful to watch them. <laughs> I We had a lot of comments about their therapy and opportunities talk last week that I just mm-hmm. found... It, it, it's wonderful to me how watching the show we're, we're all watching something different. Yeah. 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 That's why I was like, I mean, we appreciate it, but it's just variety is the spice of life. Uh, but I do agree with the comment where the experts are to blame. Again, don't come at us for not watching the matchmaking special, but if she, and I think aid, you mentioned it. If she didn't say it wasn't a deal breaker. And <laughs> that she wanted someone who was actively in therapy. It's kind of something to pair them up with someone who feels like, hey, I'm good. I don't want to do it. I'm not ready to at this point. And she feels like you should have to do it as a tune-up in life. That's a huge value mismatch right there. Um, I'm the only one who would find that to be like a crazy requirement that my partner must be in active therapy? I don't know, but uh, <laughs> it's clear. <laughs> it just sounds on brand. You, you should be disqualified from the show if one of your deal breakers is they must be in active therapy. I don't think Claire is cut out for TV. Fair enough. Getting back to this week. Um, so Becca is talking to a reptile of some kind. She's asking the reptile about Married at First Sight. It was really an ugly animal. Um, <laughs> Lauren in her cam tells us that last night she started sleeping separately, but then she did go back to bed with him at 5 a.m. so that he wouldn't wake her up and her not be in bed. He says things feel offbeat, and today he's looking forward to opening a narrative. Interesting word choice. Um <laughs> Brennan is excited because he's going flyboarding. When he said flyboarding, I and I, I was like, what is flyboarding? And he also said it was a bucket list item. Emily is still her hand. Her hand. Mm-hmm. Um, so he gets in. There's a little discussion about her talking about competitiveness and like new activities. None of this comes to pass. So she wishes him luck. He goes out. It's the jetpack thingy. Like, it looks like it should be in, like, a sci-fi movie or something. And you they shoot you in the air with the water. Honestly, it seems like a balancing game. It doesn't look very fun. My friend did it. She said it took a while before she could finally get it to balance. But I guess when you do it, like she said, there's a sense of accomplishment. We're getting to do it. But you're right. It's a lot of balancing. She's, once again, while he's doing it, she's like, I wish my hand didn't hurt. Um, when she goes, they have a little hug before she goes. I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys are so cute. And then he says his ring almost fell off, but she has a good go. She's ha- she seems to have a harder time getting up than he did, but he's cheering her on. Both of them watched each other and cheered each other on, um, as they were doing it. And then she finally got it. He tells her us that like flyboarding with a broken wrist is just so impressive. He thinks she's a catch and she's awesome. I thought to myself, but is your wrist an essential part of flyboarding that seems to be a lower body activity? Well, you're going to fall. And half the time, whenever you're going to fall, whether it's skating, whether it's anything, you always must put your hand out to break your fall. So for every time she's falling into the water and her hand goes, it hits. Fair enough. That hurts. Once again, she needs (laughs) medical attention. It's very baffling. She's just walking around. Not wrapped at all. Uh, So they're they're just... Afterwards, they hug and they just talk about how fun it was. Um, Lauren and Cameron head to this beautiful, like, lagoon thing. Oh, so they have interviews. And in hers, she said she put him in a predicament where he felt offended. And then he had to give a history lesson. And when a minority has to do that, it's insult to injury. They're still getting to know each other, but navigating difficult conflict to see what's best for them. So after she says that in an interview, um, we see them talking and she says, it's nice to get off the resort. 
And he asks how she's feeling. And she says, okay. And he says, just okay. And then she reiterates, she says, nothing that was said was said out of malice. He, he says it was a lot. He doesn't necessarily agree when she says nothing was said out of malice. And he doesn't have to, but I thought that was interesting. He says that there are a lot of things he doesn't move on. And one is who I am and where I come from. I'm not saying it's a red flag, but I think it's really interesting to say that there are a lot of things that you don't move on. Really? Why? Generally speaking, like humans should be pretty, you need to have some flexibility. And I'm not saying he needs to have flexibility on this particular topic, but I think it's interesting to say I'm intractable about many things. Not a few things, a lot of things. I think I read it wrong. I thought when he says move on, I know what the word means, but I think he meant like there's a lot of things I don't get mad about. But one of the things that I don't play with is where, who I am and where I'm from. Okay. And I, I, you know what? I think that is, I like, once again, we're all watching a different show. Because <laughs> I literally understood that to be opposite. But I understand how you could be right. But he said an example of something he doesn't move on is who he is and where he comes from. Yeah. I don't move on many things. But the one thing I don't move on. I don't know. My brain hurts. I had too much turkey. Okay. So we both took what he said differently. But he talks about he holds a lot of pride about who he is and where he comes from. She does too. He then says he wasn't upset. I don't know why he said that. Dude, you were upset. (laughs) (sighs) Orion is not helping his cause when we say... He doesn't mean what he says. He does differently. Sir, your exact words were, I'm heated. (laughs) We're all watching different things, but we can agree that you said heated and you can't say you weren't upset. Like, this is like how an after party last week, he was like, I gave her a grace. (laughs) And they're like, no, you didn't. I was watching with somebody and before he could even say the second half of his sentence, when he said he wasn't upset and she watches the show, she was like, liar. (laughs) she says that she's reflected on this marriage and she just wants him to feel safe valued and seen in the marriage and she wants to be sure that when he comes home he has that and he says same goes to you she says that we both deal with insincere and ignorant comments and neither of us should have to come back home to that same ignorance. But she still thinks they can create something beautiful. Orion says he doesn't want them to run away from hard things like race and religion. It's always going to be intense because of an opposing, and she says not opposing, but differing views. Um, she says it's great that the, the upside is that they have time and space to like take this opportunity to dig deep and it's hard to stay mad in paradise. She could see this going differently at home, but it's good for them to learn how to navigate and no matter what it is, they know how to do better. And then like Orion gives her a very nice side hug while they're sitting there in the lagoon that apparently is a cenote. It was very nice. Like when he slid over and put his arm around her and I was like, wow, like this was a good conversation and it is looking hopeful you know you know last week i'm like there is no coming back from this so when they had this conversation it was mature it was productive and he just slid over i was like wow what do i know (laughs) but it was the calm before the storm so claire and cameron they're going to this thing called the splat center the splatter experience i guess you throw paint around it's like with paint but like black lights I was actually kind of Mm -hmm. the 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 neon I I was trying to figure out how this all works because I am not that bright um but (laughs) you're in the dark but there's glow in the dark paint and you throw it and they have a canvas and once again she asked if he's a painter and he said he was born with one in his hand and she said that's news to me which was jokey jokey but considering her like past record I'm like, that's felt like an unnecessary dig. Um, Like it was a a joke. (sighs) So they have a splat instructor. 
I was like, why do you need an instructor when you literally just throw paint? Um, <laughs> so Kenny says one, two, three, and then they throw paint and they have a really good time. It appears they throw paint on each other. I was worried cause he started it, but she was totally a good sport. I was wondering why, like with the canvases, I'm like, if you're just painting on canvases, why is there paint all over this room? But then they started throwing paint on each other. And I was like, oh, that's why. Yeah. Um, you guys, I'm slow. What can I say? Um, so they have a lot of fun. It seems like they're very relaxed, throwing paint on each other, having a good time. And after the interview, she says there was some pent up energy she needed to express. Then they get to do some paint gunning. Cameron is like, I really like her. And seeing her smiling and having fun makes him think that she's into him. Um, and he's hoping spotting paint, they can, after spotting paint, they can find a way to have romance between them. She tells him that she feels like he's a large kid and she's like, with paint all over me, I need to shower. He calls her stunning. Then he compliments her on taking her aggressive play well. Anyway, at the end of this, they're like, we had a good time and they laugh. And it was actually a good Claire and Cameron scene. Sure. I, you know, like you said in the beginning, like she's like, she's looking forward to this because she wants to see the less serious side of him. And I'm so confused again because all Cameron does is crack his funny jokes. So I don't know what less serious side. I'm so irritated by these two because all she keeps saying is I don't know how he feels about me, if he's attracted to me. I'm like, you're both adults who took a leap to marry a stranger. If you don't know, why don't you just ask? But at the end of it all, I'm like, if she's laughing, I love it because whatever. All, it's just also ironic. All she keeps saying is like, oh, I, I'm not sure where I feel, but all he says in his confessionals is that he likes her and he's attracted to her. It, never has there ever been a mismatch couple. <laughs> no matter how hard they try. Like, they're having fun, but it doesn't even seem organic. It just seems like, let's have fun. Must have fun. But the fun is not leaping through the screens. The more you tell me that you're having fun, <laughs> the less I believe you. <laughs> so, um, after this, they do basically girls and boys getting together. Emily does a selfie cam where she tells us there's an issue with her hair. The girls and boys. So they go back and forth between the girls and the boys. Cameron says it's nice to have a sunny day, which really tells us about how great the weather has been at their honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> Austin has been designated the conversation starter so he's like hey how do we like being married um, Brennan says you just meet a stranger and Austin finishes his sentence and says who you get along with really well so Ryan's like oh are you all getting along really well Cameron is really hyped up about this morning he's like they had a breakthrough moment they've had all these intense conversations but they were playful this morning um, and th they keep on getting stuck in the same mode of being serious. He says, Claire is good at communicating how she feels, but not great at telling me what she wants. I thought that was great. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> She's like, best way to put it. The girls are in a pool, but we know, I don't think Becca can swim. And so Becca, not swim, but get in water due to her get surgery. Uh-huh. So Becca and Lauren are like sitting on the edge and Claire and Emily are actually in the pool. Claire says that she struggled before dating guys who won't show her off or hold her hand. Um, she sees the others and says like, oh, your guys' attraction is very immediate, but she hasn't had that experience. Then we cut to Cameron saying he's attracted, but they're the, not the most intimate yet, but he's forward to getting in there, but they haven't kissed or cuddled. Becca asks, like, does he, like, is he affectionate or something? And Claire is like, oh, he won't do that. And Lauren is like, he had his arm around you when we were together. <laughs> and everybody agrees, like, we all saw that. And she's like, oh. And Lauren tells her to look for the good and she'll see it. Lauren tells the girls that they're going through stuff. Um, they're in a whole ass interracial relationship. As you can see, they have individual cultures. Um, and they had a very uncomfortable discussion and it made her feel separated from him. Orion is basically like, it's too early to tell if this marriage is all he wanted, but he knows that Lauren is everything he wanted. 
go back to Lauren, difficult conversations, et cetera, et cetera. Claire, in an interview, is surprised that Orion and Lauren um, are having, I don't know if she would call it issues, but she says she didn't know the conversation, but she feels sad, but she's surprised that they have any issues. Come to think about it, why did they have this interview with Claire? Okay. Oh, God. (laughs) I don't want to pick on Claire, but there's so many things. In the beginning when she says, you guys, like, you know, your attraction was immediate and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, what did I miss? In the first, their wedding, she said, I am attracted to my husband. I do find him cute. So what did I miss that their attraction wasn't immediate? Was she lying? Um, I don't know. When she said that. Um, I think everything is wrapped up in, like, does she think that he's attracted to her? Us watching clearly see that he's attracted to her. She keeps on going to after party being like, well, I didn't know that. I mean, like she did claim that um, he told her that's not what she asked for or anything, but I don't know. Uh, his body language, the girls pointed out that he put his arm around her. She wasn't reciprocating because if she's as tense as she looks through TV, I'm assuming that's what she was doing. But anyways, I like how Lauren shared their issues without going into detail. She just kept it kind of kept it vague. But like you said, I don't know why they asked Claire that what Lauren wrapped the whole thing up by saying is like, we had a difficult conversation, but the fact that we were able to have that difficult conversation and, you know, talk about it and get through, it gives me hope that, you know, we're getting closer. And instead Claire is like, I'm surprised that they're more distant than it appears. And I'm like, how did you get that when she just said we got closer by talking through it? I will say it seemed like Claire's interview was one of those, not an on the fly, as we have learned, which is the ones that happened in the moment, but one that happened way later. And I'm going to just go out on a limb here and say that Claire probably didn't bring this up on her own. They were like, well, what did you think of Lauren and her right? And she had to come up with something, right? Mm -hmm. So... That's why I think that one was a little awkward. I'm like, why did they even put that in there? They're setting us up for something. <laughs> <laughs> Emily talks about how she and Brennan are great with the touching. At this point, Emily talks about how her hair is in dreads. Mm. And I just looked at Lauren's face when she said this. Mm. I don't think Lauren liked that. I know I didn't like it. So maybe I was projecting. <laughs> it was just inaccurate. Your hair is matted. Not all matted hair is dreads. What the hell are you talking about? But she said it multiple times. So that was annoying. It was very (laughs) annoying. Jeez. And also, I didn't know what was going on until, and we'll all find out together later. And then I was like, oh, that's really annoying. Your extensions got messed up. Mm -hmm. Because I was wondering, anyway, I, I was so confused about the hair thing until finally it was dealt with. But anyway... Um, Cam- Cameron asks Austin what's going well, and he says not just one thing. Cameron says it looks like they're communicating telepathically. Austin is like, things are going well. Um, but in an interview, he's like, I don't really want to share about it. Becca says things are good, but we haven't talked in depth about goals, religion, or politics. Which Did is that very, surprise you? Uh, the goals part, not so much. The religion and the politics a little bit. Yeah, I just said it was interesting. I didn't know if I was surprised, but that was kind of like a red flag. Like, uh, we've been saying, like, they're getting along so well, but that means we weren't exactly wrong when we were thinking, like, you know, Austin is like a man child. (laughs) So now it's coming into play. It's real easy to get along when you don't talk about anything important. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Becca says that usually in relationships, she typically goes into those topics right away, but she's learning on learning how to stay present, which I think means like not going all in on the difficult things right away, which is, I mean, you guys have eight weeks. This is week one. Hopefully you get to this stuff by week two. I know. I mean, it's such a difficult thing because I hear what she's saying. You just met. You can't just go all in. Like, let's talk about this, 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 this. But then there's kind of like eight weeks and it's kind of like a unique situation. Where's the line between asking the important questions, but also just living in the moment and just 
dealing with things as they come. I don't know. Yep. Becca tells the rest of the group that just because we are physically touchy doesn't mean we'll last longer. She also says they only have room to go downhill. (laughs) Uh, Becca and Austin get the hammock treatment. He's already in. She maneuvers herself in very quickly and easily. She asks if they played basketball. He says, no, they just talked um, about their marriages. He says that he downplayed their relationship because he doesn't want them to feel bad. (laughs) Becca is like, huh? Um, And she says, he's like, are you mad at me for what I said? And she's like, well, what'd you say? (laughs) He says, I said good things, just not over the top good things. And Austin says, it's probably hard for the other couples. He doesn't want to discourage anybody. She says, by extinguishing your own light, you don't light someone else's, which is true. I think the summation there is like, you're not doing them any favors by like downplaying things. But maybe Austin has been listening to Tane because like one of our biggest issues with all these people getting together is they see the goodness in other people and they're like, oh my gosh, we're comparison, comparison. So maybe downplaying is not the worst idea. No, never downplay. That's not your problem. It's reality. Not everybody's able to handle because it's like, listen, everybody, not that, okay. We live in a more sensitive world. I just um, saw this really weird article of someone with, that was told to try to look less pregnant because there was a coworker who had a pregnancy loss and it's kind of insensitive. And I'm like, how, how does that work? And we see it all the time on social media. Someone's like, I like pancakes. That's not fair to people who like waffles. It's insensitive for you to say that and all that. And I'm like, okay. That is not a him problem. His job is just to be honest. If things are not working, you have to look at either your relationship or be fine at the pace that you're going in, which was what the conversation the girls had. They were being honest and they were saying things. And Becca said, listen, I'd rather be in your position because the only way to go is up. (laughs) You know, it's how you deal with it. But I don't think he should have. It's not on him to downplay, I guess is what I'm saying. I agree. Um, I guess it depends on his his method of downplaying was to not make things sound as good as they are. Becca's was to say things are really great, but here are all the things we haven't tackled yet. So don't get too excited. I think it's just a different sort of way to downplay. I mean, just go with Danielle and Bobby. I mean, we're good. I have no complaints. <laughs> we don't fight. We're good. I mean, they weren't downplaying, downplaying and they were being truthful. So Becca sort of gives that summary to Austin and that conversation doesn't really resolve in any way. Um, Cameron and Claire. Cameron tells Claire that they gossiped like hens, which I thought was funny. Um, (laughs) He says something he noticed about being married is that he thought he was a great communicator, but she's just on on another level. He feels behind. She says, thank you. But she also needs to realize that not everyone communicates the way she does. Good, good. And she also mentioned the thing about the girls being like, they told, like, they reminded me that you put your arm around me. And she's like, uh, she apologized for not, I guess, picking up on things. Mm -hmm. And they agree that they need to relax and just have a great time. And he says he's optimistic about their future. And I'm like, good for you, because I'm sure not. (laughs) Um, Lorna and Orion, she brought him ice cream. And she brought him the right flavor of ice cream. And they flash back to when he told her what ice cream flavors he liked. And that was really cute. It really was. Um, Lauren talks about how she basks in shame a lot when she makes a mistake and it felt good to get grace from him and it feels good to get past their like first issue, if you will. And she said one feeling she wants to have in their marriage is like safe, which she has said a few times. And she just says that in the morning we do cuddles and kisses and we should go about our day feeling cared about by this person and vice versa. Orion agrees and says he's never had constant reciprocation. They say that they're both givers and they deserve to be in a relationship where it's reciprocated. And they both agree that are very happy. What? 
they're going to say this again later that they're both givers. And I thought that was very interesting. Why? I the first time that they're people... saying it. Sorry? I said it's not the first time they're saying it. They've been saying it since the start of their relationship. I'm glad they're on the same page with this characterization of themselves. But I maintain that people are not great at describing um, themselves. Mm -hmm. I don't trust people who say I'm a giver. (laughs) (laughs) It's the same way I don't trust people who say I'm a people pleaser. Oh, really? (laughs) Correct. Yes. Uh, That's interesting. Unless you immediately acknowledge how bad it is to be a people pleaser and how you're working on not being a people pleaser again, I don't want to hear about how you're a people pleaser. (laughs) All right, guys, we'll be right back. This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on these jam-packed days. I really enjoy Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service. I've been eating chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals that are delivered straight to my door. You all know that I'm a busy bee, and Factor has saved me time and helped me eat better during this holiday season. If you need an extra boost to support your wellness goals and feel your best, try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. Some of us have to go back into the office, which means we have to think about lunch. Factor has you covered with lunch to go. Effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go. No microwave required. Head to factormeals.com slash autocallmass50 and use code autocallmass50 to get 50% off. That's code A-L-T-A-R-C-A-L-L-M-A-F-S-50 at factormeals.com slash autocallmass50 to get 50% off. Color clashing is in, crochets are trending, and Y2K fashion is back for who knows what reason. But your favorite drinks never go out of style with Drizzly, the number one app for alcohol delivery. Drizzly has you covered with the largest selection of beer, wine, and spirits delivered in under 60 minutes. They won't judge you for drinking last season's cocktails. Maybe you can't be talked out of participating in the 2000s revival, but at least they can get you out of wearing those jelly platforms to the corner store. (laughs) With Drizzly, it's easier than ever to find a timeless classic or shake it up with something fresh. Whether that means you're cooking a storm in the kitchen or looking for your next Netflix binge. Need something special to impress the trendsetter who has it all? Give the gift of drinks with Drizzly because you can't buy wine in the wrong size. It's a no-brainer. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. Amazon's got the best deals on Black Friday. Oh, the best deals are on Cyber Monday. Friday comes first when it comes to saving. Monday's worth the wait for what you've been craving. Deals so good it'll feel like stealing. Real cool message, could you make it less appealing? What's with the beef? You can get that too. Want you call us? What's triggering you? Whichever day you're shopping on, you'll save a bunch at Amazon. On Black Friday, Cyber Monday too. Okay, so we're back with the group all together. They are going boating. I am so excited for them because I'm like, dang, thank God it's not raining. I didn't know what was to come. <laughs> if you're doing a count, Emily is joking about her hair. Um, and Becca is trying to help her detangle whatever is going on there. And Cameron, Mr. Can't Stop Cracking Jokes, Honestly, if I was in Cameron's presence, I'd be so annoyed. I just really can't stand people who think they have to crack a joke for every silence, for every interaction, for everything. Like, just stop. And he can't stop saying, oh, my God, oh, my God, and just making jokes about her hair. So um, she says that it looks like, you know, she was able to get a professional. She's really scared, but they'll be able to take care of it. But then my excitement for them is popped because it does start raining and I'm sad for them again. Like just what a, like their Mexico trip is not like season 11 New Orleans trip where it was just sunshine and sea and stuff. This is just dark clouds and overcast skies and it's not looking bright. But on after party, they did say the resort was really wonderful. So if they like it, I love it. 
Um, Promotional consideration sure. provided by. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they get there. They're waiting for the rain to stop because they're like, it starts to rain, then it stops, and the sun might come out. And they basically all nap in the bus. But then someone comes out to tell them that their boat trip is canceled. Once again, the stressful C squared Cameron and Claire. Cameron has moved because while everyone is napping, he didn't want to um, lay on Claire because he's tall and he needs more leg room. But these people get their wires crossed again. He thought he was doing something nice by moving. And he was telling her, she's like, I don't understand why you had to move. He's like, yeah, because if I had stayed, I would have had to lean on you to be comfortable. And he's like, I'm sorry. I made an assumption. She's like, yeah, you did. He said, I made a poor assumption. She's like, yeah, you did. You made a poor assumption. I'm just like, oh my God, these people, please. Put Let's us out of move. your misery. Put us out of your misery because a whole season of this is, ew, I'm stressed. So I was like, I, why? The man, <laughs> this is so minor. This is so not worth this conversation. Mm. I, <sighs> it's the tone for me. It's the tone for me. This man is already apologizing, saying I made a poor assumption. <laughs> A poor assumption because you move. <laughs> and it's not, you know, the thing is, in my mind, I'm like, I totally get why you'd be like, oh my gosh, he's moving away from me. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like this is something you can talk about later. Yeah, I think it's because it's not really about the moving. It's about every other couple was leaning against each other, lying down and all that. To his point, he is tall. He's not going to be cramped up. He's still not sure about the physical touch and things. And from what he described, he would have had to like lean against her. She's saying it's fine, but she might, she always looks visibly uncomfortable with any physical touch. So I don't know. But then it could also be the insecurity of what we learned earlier. None of her exes have ever claimed her in public, went at PDA in public. And in the airport, Cameron apparently abandoned her and didn't stand by her. So it could be everything all together that just came out in that little, yeah, you did. So <laughs> they just can't get it together. Um, they come back to the hotel. There's a whole, what I assume is breakfast bread because those are pastries and fruit. And Becca has questions for them to answer. Um, through a card game because we haven't had enough like from Beverly Hills. And I wonder if producers just have card games just stuck up for when it's needed. So they ask each other questions. Becca asks Cameron his biggest pet peeve and he says a grocery store with no self-checkout and they all laugh. I don't know if it was that funny, but I think I'm the opposite. I'm just annoyed by how we have less and less people at the cashier. And there's more self checkout now. But I thought the self checkout thing was pretty funny. I laughed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, the way that he had it ready and was so immediate about it was very funny to me. Like he really does not like the self checkout. Um, <laughs> I'm a, like sometimes I want someone to scan my stuff. Sometimes I don't want to talk to people. So I totally understand why a person would like like if you just yeah if you don't want to talk to people, self checkout is the way to go. <laughs> Orion asks Becca in what areas of her life does she feel most fulfilled? She looks at Austin and is like, romance right now. And they're like, aww. I thought she was going to say her career. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Cameron asks Lauren, who in your life can you be the most vulnerable with? And she said her little sister. And before that, it was her mom. Her little sister is 27. And she adds, same age as my husband. And Brennan says, oh, I always forget that you're 27. I'm like, how do you forget? I don't forget he's 27. Does he come off as mature? He, he play acts. Really oh, well. that is right. He cosplays as, <laughs> as mature. Um, I don't know why Cameron gets to ask another question, but he asks Emily, what is she most curious about that she hasn't explored yet? And my dirty mind went to her husband's body, but she was like, you know, I'm curious about being in love. And I was like, oh, that's a good answer. That's true. I forget that she hasn't been in a relationship. Lauren asks Orion, what am I teaching you? He says how to talk about the future 
And in doing that, he caught feelings. Mm -hmm. He asked her the same question. And she says, you're helping me expand on giving grace and be patient. If we took a shot every time Lauren and Orion talked about giving grace or feeling safe or feeling comfortable, (laughs) we would all be drunk. There is something about the way they talk that actively annoys me. But I think it's a me problem, not a them problem. I think it's a half and half because I know exactly what you mean. Like, I know we talked about in the beginning where we said, like, their answers seem like it's rehearsed, but not for Ryan. But for Lauren, I think that's just who she is. Lauren comes across as self-actualized to me. And I think she just thinks through. But she, she speaks that way, but doesn't sound like she's speaking therapy speak. I just think it's her. But I, I think can see she's how other overly people... analytical about herself. Mm, yeah. Now, overly is a very subjective word. Yeah. But she does sound like she thinks about everything she says before she says it. Mm-hmm. But if that's the case, then she's thinking really fast because she's always ready. So um, she says that he's patient and he's kind and he's gentle and she n- hasn't had that before. And it's helping her do that for him. Another aw. They ask Claire what's her biggest life lesson. She's like, make sure you show people that you love them because you could lose them at any time. If you have feelings, never hold back. And I'm like, Claire, a too? <laughs> because <laughs> is this for Cameron? Because you're still not asking what you feel because <laughs> you're not showing it. You say you like him. <laughs> you're not showing it. So you just want him to show it. Just ask. It's so crazy because she's a therapist. Just ask. Communication. Anyways, Cameron said, yeah, that's true, that he's guilty of taking his people for granted. And Claire puts a hand on his thigh under the table. Orion asks, you know, sorry, I keep wondering, how do you get that shot as a cameraman? You're filming them. How do you go under the table? You know, you're (laughs) asking the good questions. (laughs) Because they were across, and I was like, huh, interesting. Um, Orion asked Cameron, what is the hardest part of yourself to accept? And suddenly Claire decides that that was the time to get something off of his face. And then they all laugh and blush. She's like, oh, sorry, sorry. And Cameron says, a lot of my memories don't align with who I am anymore. That I have large portions of my life that are like watching a movie. And I'm like, wow. Like, honestly, I wasn't expecting that. And now I want to know about his childhood because each week I feel like we get a puzzle piece, the being in therapy as a child, the parents not being around, the grandmother who he loved the most, not his parents, his grandmother. And then now, you know, his um, life feeling like a movie and who he's not anymore. Oh God, please let this not be on the matchmaker special, but I just kind of want to know more about his past. He yep. does tell he does tell us that he hated school and he was a troublemaker and then his parents got divorced. Um, but because of that, things have aligned and he's in paradise with his wife. But that just felt like he wanted to wrap it up in a bow and didn't go deep into, you know, what it was. Um, I still think that was vague, but um, his confessional is the confessional I spoke about last week where they all look different. The one where, like you mentioned, they do afterwards and they're sitting on a chair and the, it's on a, against a wall. Um, he looked really different because he has grown a beard in this confessional. Which I'm surprised they let him do that. <laughs> well, they do. Well, that's the whole point of why I mentioned this confessional. They all look like completely different people. They're not trying to make them look the same. I don't think they care about that. If that's what they don't care about the continuity look of them. No, because it's a completely different confessional. Like they just, it looks like it's obviously probably filmed after the show was done and they're doing pickups and they came back or whatever. But this part particular confessional, which they have every season is always completely different. Very Um, true. Very true. They all say nice things to Cameron, this is why we love you, and blah, blah, blah. Everyone says that except Claire. It was kind of like the Kirsten (laughs) scene when Shaq opened up. But honestly, I think this was edits. 
because Clara says in the confessional that she appreciates him saying that and she suddenly feels connected to him. So since they had a day off, the hairdresser came in, the hairdresser didn't speak English and they were trying to get her hair extensions out. In After Party, we learned that this man came without scissors. I, 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 I don't know what they told him he was coming for, but also how is there a hairdresser walking around without scissors? <laughs> but okay. I, okay. I, I, the whole hair thing, I will freely admit that I don't really like get those type of extensions, like understand how they're installed or how they could possibly come out. Clearly she got them for the wedding. Either she didn't know how to maintain them or I don't know, but that's how she ended up with this horrible mess of a hair and this man with no scissors coming in to try to fix her extensions. Maybe he wasn't planning to cut out her extensions. He was going to try to fix them. I don't know. It doesn't matter. You don't know what it is. You just come with all the tools. Also, a pair of scissors. <laughs> what if you were going to do a trim or what? That's wild. Fair yeah, enough. Fair enough. In after party, the tools that he's using were provided by Emily. So that, again. And her extensions were supposed to not probably, I don't know if it's the quality of it, but basically it's not supposed to mix with water. And she probably mixed it with water. And that's why I got mad at out. Or something so what? so emily says <laughs> what i'm like extensions that aren't supposed to go in water that you kept after like for uh, anyway not I, supposed I, to like maybe she didn't know the quality because sometimes it happens like you just have the wrong kind of hair and it just didn't mix well with the water or something i don't know um emily's stressed she says there's a lot of cutting happening Brennan comes out. He's like, I'm a man. I have no idea what is happening. I'm just trying to be supportive. And one hour and 18 minutes later, that weave is out. That was patience right there. <clears throat> All right, we'll take a break here and we'll come back to talk about uh, take two for the boat trip. And we're back. So they try again to make it to the boat. Cameron makes a joke that I actually found funny when he says like, um, they did open weave surgery <laughs> on her hair. Um, they make it to the boat. It doesn't look sunny, but hey, it's not raining. Cameron has his arm around Claire, but I don't know. She looked tense. She looked like, oh my God, take your hand off of me. I don't want to be here. Um, Emily thanks Brennan for understanding her whole deal again with the dreads. Not dreads with your matted hair. Um, at this point, they're all like separated and having different conversations with each other. Um, Lauren and Orion and Becca and Austin are talking to each other. And Lauren is sharing how it works because they have things that they've been wanting from um, their partners in the past. And now they found it with each other. Um, she asked Becca and Austin if it's easy for them because they have similarities. I'm like, mm, well, yeah. Austin said, yeah, definitely. I think so. Once again, Orion says that reciprocation is a big thing for him. Becca said she kept asking the experts to give her someone that was normal. I'm like, mm. but basically she goes, uh, okay, but just someone that was a genuinely good person. Austin says that Becca makes him feel safe. And Brennan just says more nice things to Emily about Emily. Uh, Cameron and Claire, I think they get more camera time than anybody else. Cameron is telling Claire where he was hesitating, um, you know, to like kind of physical touch, but now he's comfortable to hold her hand without thinking. Claire says, yeah, I don't feel uncomfortable. Cameron says, you know, I want to say something and I'm trying and I'm not trying to hurt your feelings or anything. And I'm like, oh, my God, this 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 cannot be good. Just don't if you it. start if you start with that, this can't be good. Mm. He says, it's safe to say that between the two of us, it has been hardest on you. And she goes, why would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> and he says, um, I think I'm more willing to be in an uncomfortable situation than you are. And like, you know, I'm feeding off of your energy, which is she feels in the blanks. She's like awkward. And then she goes, yeah, I agree. And I'm like, you just made it seem like you were about to fight this man, but you agree to what he's saying. And then she's like, but if they allow it to happen, it'll be disastrous. Oh, oh my God. 
this is painful. That eh? conversation felt <laughs> very unnecessary. <laughs> he says that he feels that they're in a different relationship than they were in yesterday. He didn't know what to expect, and he's unbelievably pleasantly surprised. And she's an amazing person, and it doesn't help that she's easy on the eyes. And there's a whole, okay, maybe it does help, doesn't. I'm like, oh, stop. Orion asks Austin if they have fears, and Austin says that he doesn't. He's an in-the-moment person, and he has a positive outlook, and Becca says like she's an overthinker. Lauren says that the worry hasn't set in. She knows there will be problems, but she doesn't think there'll be anything to make them hate each other and use the D word. Mm. Why all this foreshadowing? First, it was that this marriage thing is so easy. We're going to make it good. And then our word gate happened. And now she says, there's nothing that will make us hate each other and use the D word. And next week's preview, the D word is being used. So yeah, they all jump into the water and they all seem to have fun. Lauren says, everyone is basking in the love and she feels blessed to be around it. Aww. Hmm. So Lauren and Orion go to dinner. I'm just like, I hope these people have time to nap. Damn. From one activity to the other. Because the boat didn't seem like it was like a close by thing. So they have to make a trip back and forth and then come back and then film group scenes and then do your um, interviews. Like, it's a honeymoon. Like, you should rest at some point. So she says that she had a great day and she just caught herself staring at Orion like that's my husband she says she enjoys touching him and that they got all touchy feely all day and he says that he enjoyed that she says she's at the point where she's beginning to imagine sex with him except she doesn't say sex she just says I'm beginning to the point where I'm beginning to imagine and then kind of leaves it there I'm like you're allowed to say sex on Lifetime considering what else they're about to say i think that they should be allowed to say sex (laughs) um the one thing i do like about lauren is how she's very direct like she could give claire tips and she just asks the question she wants to ask and she says what she wants to say so he says okay how does it start and honestly i'm impressed by how she understood what he was asking because when he said how does this start i was like Like, what is he asking exactly? I didn't know how to interpret that. And she says, fellatio from him. And he says, you're right. I'm a giver. (laughs) How many times did we hear I'm a giver? (laughs) The more you tell me, the less I believe it. He says, I will start from head to toe. And he likes kissing, working down and around. And she's like, oh, I like down and around. Then she asks him how he feels about sex toys. And this man says he has a little collection. Like Sidebar. When men say that they have a sex toy collection, my first reaction is ill. Because unless you have to say, I'm saying ill because he's, you know, as presumably he was a single man. You are not dating one person in particular. Who are you using? Are you using the sex toys and throwing them away or cleaning them or are we using them on this? Like, ew. That's my ew. first thought. So, I mean, it depends. Well, it depends on what the sex. Anyway, there's so many questions about the sex toys that will not be answered. Either way, he hasn't had sex for only a year and a half. So, what collection? What are you keeping it for? Why are you. Mm, all besides the point. And then when she goes a collection, he's like, oh, no, less than five. I don't know. Does less than five qualify for a collection? I will give him that less than five qualifies for a sex toy collection. Okay. All right. So he says she sounds like she likes to explore. And she's like, yeah. And then he goes, with us getting closer, it will be hard to resist. For sure. For sure. She said, yeah, I just <laughs> She said she wants it to be organic, so no pressure from her at all. And he's like, you know what? That gives him comfort. Orion is in no rush to have sex with Lauren. And I don't know if this is a smart thing or if this is a front for something. In terms of, I hope he's really attracted to her, like he says. But he, he, from the very beginning, he's always been like, we need to take it slow. We need to do that or whatever. Which, when you think about girl certificate, I'm just like, uh, does this gel? 
Is this in line? I don't know. A bunch of people seem to think that he's not attracted to Lauren. I don't think so. I think he is. But I don't I, know if I'm con I don't think... Okay, I am with you. I think he is attracted. But he does... And he said it, and I think he meant it, and I don't think it has to do with Lauren. He does, I think, take sex a different way. I have no answer to so that. I don't know the man, his, but... His time not having sex, I take that as a statement of his values. Okay. I think that's fair, and I know I can admit when I'm not being fair, but could it be like a Justin situation? Maybe he just didn't find someone to have sex with you. I mean, that could totally be it, too. Because <laughs> I think that's the new thing. I'm striking out, and I'm like, I'm just taking time to reassess myself, and uh, yeah, not sleeping with anybody. That's a whole different thing, but that's just me and my cynical self. Um, he says, <clears throat> when he was asked, he said he would love to have sex, but he doesn't expect it to be that quick because it's been some time for him. She asked the last time he had sex, and he says a little over a year and a half, that it's more than the physical for him. She goes, oh, that's uh, not the case for me. I'm the opposite. Like, I had sex a couple of months ago. In fact, two months to the day. I was like, Lauren, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Because I think she really thought he was going to be like, oh, and laugh it off. And I'm like, this man, no, 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 no. Seems very principled. <laughs> principled. I don't know if that's the right word, but I, <laughs> I don't, um, I felt bad for her because I could totally understand why she would think this would not be a big deal. And when you get blindsided with the, oh, this is a huge deal. I, I didn't understand how she could have ever seen that coming. Mm-hmm. And then, again, Lauren never hesitates. She's like, are you uncomfortable with the fact that I had sex two months ago? That's <laughs> our girl. Like- That's our girl. <laughs> She's like, we are not going to fester in anything. I'm asking you, do you got a problem with me? <laughs> he says, um, honestly, he, starts to, uh, he always starts a sentence with, you know, to be honest, I'm feeling uncomfortable. Because my mindset was once it was revealed um, that I was matched, I was engaged. She goes, uh, that's the same for me. I had sex before the reveal. What's your point? And of course, he had no comeback for that. And somehow he deviates to saying, I know my worth. I don't want to hand him myself out to just anyone. What the fuck does that mean, Mr. Oh, Ryan? Nothing good. Nothing good. My favorite thing I was watching with somebody... And she goes, when he said, I don't want to hand myself, oh, sorry. When he said, when I don't want to hand myself out, she goes with the hand gesture. (laughs) (laughs) And she was right. The hand gesture made what he said much worse. Like, at this point, it just really felt like you wanted to make her feel bad for having sex. And she was like, again, so how do you feel about it? And he's like, well, to be honest, It takes sex off the table for me. She goes, all right, what's next? Sex is done. And that was how the episode ends. And Orion should really be ashamed of himself. That was just terrible. Which is why we always say, like, it just feels like he's cosplaying as a very patient, kind, understanding man. Because at the very center of anything, he just, I don't want to say it, doesn't give grace. (laughs) <laughs> so I don't know where this is We get a little more on After Party And if After Party was what it used to be I feel like we could have gone deeper We didn't get that much But I mean at least he saw the error of his ways But we'll talk about it on the After Party episode um, We see the preview for next week And it is not looking good Because it is already time for Pastor Cal to ask Do you want to end this marriage? And I'm like wow how did we get here? Nobody's supposed to be here. If you see an expert on the video call at the honeymoon, these people are not going to (laughs) last. Hey. uh, And as far as Orion and his (laughs) nonsense, this is what I mean by I'm a giver, I'm a giver, I'm a giver. Giving of what? You couldn't even give to keep your mouth shut to think a little before you started talking about how you just don't throw yourself out there. 
what was the purpose of saying this? Mm-hmm. I It would have been fine, fine for you to be like, yeah, I just, it takes me a while. Like, I don't really throw my, like, I'm not quick to like have sex with my partner. Those are all fine because those are all about you. But you definitely made it into something about her. Mm-hmm. Anyway, oh yeah. They're finished. <laughs> <laughs> Very curious to see how long it's going to take them to be finished. But between last week's conversation and this week's conversation, they're done. Tane, who has your bouquet this week? You know, in the spirit of Thanksgiving, honestly, I was just going to give all of them the bouquet. I think they all made strides. I think they were being honest about where they were. And yes, even Cameron and Claire, because Claire taking accountability, like you put your arms around me, I didn't reciprocate, I could do better. Cameron just even having a conversation, no matter how awkward, it was just nice. I think Lauren encapsulated the whole, she just was, she felt blessed to be around the love. I think the whole boat scene and all that kind of stuff was nice. So in the spirit of Thanksgiving, they all get a bouquet this week. Who has yours? I'm actually, I'm going to give it to Cameron and Claire. Okay. Because this week they had a good moment where they were interacting with each other in a way that didn't make me think. (gasps) So, um, for splatting and just having a good time and chilling out. And it really did feel like this week they made progress. Um, It is two steps forward, one step back, but they seem to be progressing and enjoying each other much more than they have so far. And I think that was due to their own hard work, to be honest. So I will, I will give them my bouquet this week. Okay. Who has your ashes? Again, in the spirit of Thanksgiving, I was not going to give anybody them ashes. But when this man opened his mouth to say, I just don't get myself out to everybody I know my worth, it was a no-brainer. Orion absolutely gets the ashes burnt to the crisp. Who has yours? Orion. (laughs) (laughs) If you have super, super strict standards for the exact time in which you consider acceptable for your person to have been in relationships or done whatever with other people don't come on the show yeah people just ask questions all recklessly i don't know what you think the answers could have been but yeah yeah okay well that's the episode this week you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at Alter Call M-A-F-S. That's A-L-T-A-R-C-A-L-L-M-A-F-S. We love hearing from you guys on social media. Available anywhere you listen to your podcast. Thank you for your support. Thank you for listening. We are so thankful for you guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify if you're so inclined. And we will be here next week for episode seven. See you then. Bye. Bye.